We're listening to ChartingWealth.com for Wednesday, the 2nd of March, 2016. We continue to see the market move up, actually surged up today 2.21%. That is the total market as depicted by IYY, which is a U.S. total market index fund. It tracks the entire market, and we continue to see it move up, up, up. We've got about four good candles connected on our two-day trend line. That's four two-day candles all together. We have, what is that, six two-day candles moving up, green open boxes, surging market after crossing over going up on the 16th. It continues to move up. Movement is still above the two-day trend line. Had a, uh, a down day on Monday, but as the market reared itself on Tuesday, jumped up in the morning, followed by a big climb in the afternoon. Look like at the close of Monday, the market might be getting ready to do a short-term crossover going down, but it fooled anyone who thought that and continued to surge up, continuing to move up well above the two-day trend line. We don't have an input yet. Now, some of you have asked, what about using a smaller chart, the two-hour chart? That is indeed possible. The only problem is you get so many fluctuations with the two-hour chart that it can be difficult. You can actually find yourself getting into a uh, basically a false bump up. Four-hour chart is a lot better. The bigger the chart, the bigger the move, the safer the move. And uh, that is one reason that we tend to use the four-hour along with the two-day as our big chart. And of course, once a week, we look at the weekly chart. Now we're going to go back to our two-day chart. We're going to take a look at SPY, which is Standard & Poor 500. That was up 2.39%, so even higher than the total market. It's had one day of some questionable moves on the 24th. I'm sorry, one two-day candle of some questionable moves on the 24th of February. But again, it's racked in up movement since it crossed over going up back on the 16th. Derivative oscillator continues to speed up. MACD and signal line continue to diverge. Now, if we look at the four-hour chart, what do we see? We see it bumping up in the morning, even higher in the afternoon. No down wick on the afternoon movement up. Got close to crossing over going down at the close on Monday, but on Tuesday made up for any of that down movement again, up 2.39%. Next, we're going to go to the NASDAQ 100, as represented by QQQ. What do we see going on there? Well, it started its up movement back on the 12th. Actually, didn't cross over on the MACD over the signal line until the 18th. Had one day of a little bit of, uh, well, one two-day candle, a little bit of down movement on the 24th, then continued to surge up. That was just a red open box, rather. Still above the two-day trend line, connecting about three candles, three two-day candles there. And if we look intraday, we see again bump up in the morning and a big strong bump up in the afternoon. No down wick up. Get this, 3.2%. And uh, again, no crossover going down yesterday, the yesterday as in Monday. But lots of up movement on Tuesday as we jump into Wednesday above the Bollinger Band, closed outside the Bollinger Band on the queues. So again, Mark and confirmed up moves on all of our indexes, both the total market, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ 100. Lastly, let's look at gold. What's going on with gold? When we look at the two-day chart on gold, we see that it has continued to move up again Gold hit its most recent high back on the 12th of February, then dropped off, uh, had a lot of indecision on the 16th, that candle opening up on Monday. And then what have we seen happen since then? Gold has uh, moved up steadily, slowly but steadily over the last five candles, actually 10 days. Although the derivative oscillators dropped over into the negative, as of the candle on the 1st of March, it's still, though, above the two-day trend line, and it's still positive as far as the MACD being above the signal line. Now, let's see what we see. It was technically down for the day, 0.72%. Four-hour chart still in a confirmed down move. Hasn't yet crossed over, still above the two-day trend line, but no crossover yet on gold. It's just sliding sideways mostly 
over the last many days. So we'll continue to watch if indeed gold does cross over on the four-hour chart to parallel the up movement on the two-day chart. You might look at a time to get in an up move. Maybe it'll presume its steady march. Well, it's, it's fast march up that started somewhere back around the 7th of January, leveled off around the 15th through the 21st, and then started building again through the end of uh, January on into the beginning of about the mid of February. And then it started just sort of, it dropped and then sort of slid sideways up a little bit since then. So we'll continue to watch. That is where the markets ended the day on Tuesday, the 1st of March, as we go into Wednesday, the 2nd of March. Hope you're having a great week. If you don't have our How to Read a Stock Chart video, you need it. You also need the charting layout that we offer for free, and you need to receive these updates daily, plus our weekly review and forecast once a week. Usually heads out on to you on Sunday nights. So let us hear from you. Go to chartingwealth.com, sign up. We're happy to hear from you. Look forward to helping at chartingwealth.com.